physicsninja.org. Okay, I want to uh, now solve three cases where I'm going to apply Gauss's law to a case to problems that have spherical symmetry. Uh, the simple possible case that you can have is a point charge. So let's consider a small point charge Q, and let's just make it positive. And what I want to do now is I want to choose a Gaussian surface that reflects the symmetry of the object that I'm considering. So in this case, I'm going to choose a sphere. Uh, the sphere is going to have a radius R. And now I want to look at how do I actually evaluate the left-hand side of Gauss's law. So this integral over that surface of the electric field uh, with a scalar product of the area. Well, we, we actually know what the electric field of a point charge is, but more importantly, we know the direction. The direction is radially, radially outward uh, from the positive charge. Uh, the vector, or the small uh, vector denoting that infinitesimal area, that also points radially out from my surface. So that's one of the simplification that comes in. Because that vector dA will be parallel to the vector at E, or the electric field vector, this expression simplifies. In addition, what you can do, since we also know that the electric field should have the same magnitude everywhere on this surface. Therefore, it's a constant. The magnitude of the electric field is constant everywhere on this surface. So that means you can simplify that expression. So we've got a few simplifications to make. The electric field and the element of area are in the same direction. Therefore, we can get rid of the scalar product. We also know that the magnitude of the electric field will be constant everywhere on the surface. So that's a constant. You can take it out of the integral. And all we're left with here is the integral of the area of that surface. Well, that's simply the area of a sphere. And that's a very easy quantity to write out. It's simply 4 pi multiplied times the radius squared. So that's it. For any object with spherical symmetry, the left-hand side of Gauss's law is going to look like this. It's going to be the magnitude of our electric field multiplied by uh, the surface area of our Gaussian surface, which in this case is a sphere. So now all we have to do is worry about what is the right-hand side of Gauss's law tell us. And that's even easier than the left-hand side. So Q enclosed divided by epsilon zero. How much charge is enclosed by our Gaussian surface? Well, here's the surface. All we have to do is just count the number of charge that are inside that surface. So if I only have a single point charge Q inside that surface, the charge enclosed is simply Q divided by epsilon zero. Okay. So you put everything together, together now, and what do we get? Uh, this term over here was 4 pi, or e times 4 pi r squared. Q enclosed over epsilon 0 becomes small q divided by epsilon 0. And therefore, there is Gauss's law. And now we can find what the magnitude of the field is. The magnitude of the field is simply q divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 over r squared. And that result we already knew, but you can prove it very, very easily using Gauss's law. Okay. So in the next case, we're going to look at a conductor, a spherical conductor, and see how to solve that problem. PhysicsNinja.org